General Police. Actually, this uh, bit of news broke yesterday evening. The Inspector General Police has ordered the immediate uh, removal or withdrawal of police officers who are attached to VIPs. If you don't know what VIP means, very, very important, important. <laughs> personnel. Okay. Now, at the meeting with the police commissioners and assistant inspectors, general at the force headquarters in abuja yesterday afternoon mr idris who is the igp said all state commissioners must comply with this order immediately and the officers are to be withdrawn those who are attached to private individuals and companies with the exception of um private financial institutions that's banks, banks. and likes um, the police boss also issued directives for all spy number plates used by private individuals to be withdrawn. Now, my question is, <laughs> before you talked about implementation, you know, <laughs> how long will this last? Because if I recall correctly, all the other former police boss, bosses, 2016, you know, the Okiros so, so and the Ringim and all of them, oh, okay all They're did the same, the same thing, thing and we're Don't still where, where we are so well, queen what do you think do you think this will really work mm. well um who are the vips <laughs> if i may ask if we are, who are the vips i don't think we really have vips mm. yes and uh, of course you say something now we just made a statement that same statement was made by the previous uh, yes police uh, bosses yes that have passed, uh, that just left the office. Come to think of it, mm -hmm. uh, recent, I can start by my experience. I was in uh, Area F two days ago mm -hmm. for an incident that was reported to our office, Human Rights Defenders and Advocacy Center for a rescue of a mine or two. And how do we do it? We have, we have our own jurisdiction. We have no strength of arrest. And what do we do? We we'll go for the, to the nearest police station where they at, at least attach to us some policemen that will get uh, the suspect arrested. Mm -hmm. And we we'll spend like uh, two to three hours there waiting for a policeman or woman that will be released to us to go for the arrest. My dear, we we'll left there without no single police. And mm. I believe we we'll have more than enough recruit police officers in the system. Hmm. Then because we cannot have that, we have to leave to Lion Building, the uh, island. To get a police to, get a to police. effect an arrest. arrest. Yes. Hmm. And immediately we got there, we tender our case and two policemen were also released to us for the arrest where we went and get the young man arrested from the hotel where he was hmm. performing his immorality there. What am I trying to say? The VIP, so called, you called, they have like four, five, six policemen to their wife, to their children, to their house, hmm. to their offices. Hmm. Whereas the innocent Nigerians are suffering. Of course, in our place, we, have, we are doing, we are into also risk jobs hmm. that you need policemen around. Because of threats. Yes, and, all and that. so hmm. on. But you hardly find one. Hmm. And I believe police, police boss play politics. Mm. This is political statement. Mm. Because they never, I've never seen a statement from a police boss, just like you said, this same statement was made by Abu, Abu Bakr, mm. by other police boss, mm. IG staff, was there before. The past, but mm. still, were they not there? Mm. I remember several times they've called for policemen from a, was a checking point, a checkpoint. Mm. But there are still police checkpoints. Bail is free. I can still believe I've been but going you to and I know that, that people have been paying. Of course. Said, we human rights go along with the complainant mm. to the police station mm. with our ID card. Bail is free and you have to let police know why this person should be released on bail without paying a dime. We are still suffering. I don't think there is a... It can't stand. Except, uh, of course, we're in Nigeria, but I believe that statement cannot really work. Mm. Yeah. Okay, Isaac Gode, let's hear your view on this. <laughs> well, um, I know that recent, in the re recent past, recent few months, we've had a clamor for police reform, mm. um, even an end 
to the SARS. The SARS thing, know, yes. But I mean, the campaign is really for the reform of the police force, Nigerian police. Mm. And so um, I also agree with uh, Queen that several IGs, several administrations have attempted to reduce mm -hmm. the number. I think because if you even look at our policing ratio, according to statistics, you'd see one policeman to 600 citizens. Wow. You say we have the, as of 2015, there was a report from the Minister of uh, Police Affairs, Chief mm -hmm. Caleb Olubolade. He said mm -hmm. we had 370,000 police people to 170 million Nigerians. Actually, the current statistics is about 400,000 officers because of new recruits and all of that. Mm -hmm. And out of that number, mm -hmm. about 150,000 are uh, given to VIP, I suppose yes. VIP. So that leaves you with about 250,000 police officers to a population of 180 million. Yes. And the United That's Nations ridiculous. Anyhow you want to look at it. Is mm. 1 to 400. So you can mm. imagine what the distance is that we have to. As at mm. 2017, the IG said we needed 31,000 new police recruits mm. every year for the next five years, which mm. is just to make it dense, mm. at least in the ratio. Mm -hmm. So for, for, for me anyway, I would say that what's really important is if you call back all your police officers attached to VIPs, you have to then, and he said he's going to send a memo to the president, mm -hmm. and this memo is going to come up with a criteria for uh, those who would apply exactly so, so we're still going back, back to the same thing. thing what yeah. we hope would be would be um would be put in place is a more stringent criteria mm. such that you then focus on certain category of persons who do need the security like she mentioned mm. so you have judges you know uh, judicial judicial officers mm. those who have to handle sensitive cases sure those yeah. who have to um, be at polling stations. You mm. have a lot of situation of, of uh, reports from the last elections, the last local government elections, for example, in Lagos, where people who, ele electoral officers are threatened. Mm. You know, candidates come and then they insist that the officers do, in fact, they are the ones monitoring the elections, not even the electoral monitoring officers. So you need to have these kinds of people giving uh, priority protection. And then, of course, the citizenry, because crime remains at a high in the country. Mm. And this is, all, this is also <coughs> due to the fact of inflation, the fact mm -hmm. of unemployment and other crises. So I think it's a very good move. But then again, we hope that the, the criteria is remodified in this, in this line. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, priority given to the citizens so that mm. the police can perform their real duty of protecting mm. uh, maintaining okay. law and mm. order. All right, Queen, do you actually see this working? Aside from we knowing that it's a law that they get to say this minute and the next minute, <laughs> we're else. already seeing something else. But do you mm. get to see this working and moving the police force to the next mm. level mm. to serve with the citizens? <laughs> of course, if the, if the IGP have his own plan, um, <coughs> that already, mm. and not just to withdraw because he, ha he wants to play politics. If he withdraw for a genuine reasons and have already uh, areas and uh, a strategy where he needed the force of this police, then it should work. But not the, not withdrawing them back to the station where they cannot work. Mm -hmm. If okay. you withdraw them, then you can take them to where they are needed. Okay. If uh, places like even human rights office, they should need a standby place there. When you have a case reported and you need a, an urgent rescue, <coughs> uh, there's a policeman on the ground. On ground, on ground. Mm. to like go to station, mm. wait and sign and whatever, because mm. the commissioner or the area commander in charge of such area should know that uh, my, the such uh, uh, police person is assigned to this office, so they can always get report, instant report, and whatever back to the station mm. instead of withdrawing them back. We've seen several times with police that if we withdrawn from the road, withdrawn from the VIPs, and at the end is still returning. So I think it will so <coughs> work if you have a perfect uh, plan for okay. a better reasons why you will so And also for side. better implementation. Okay, yes. and um, she was all right, it's your turn. Yes, I was going to say, I think it would also help if it is properly managed mm. yeah. because it would boost the. Um, let me say, is it the perception of the Nigerian police? Because you have reports of a police uh, officer <laughs> carrying the bag. Carrying handbag, oh, madam, madam. to the, the salon. Really big, you know, okay. going to the salon. And um, on another note, yesterday, mm. while um, this news actually broke out, 
our very, very humble senator, mm. Senator Dino Milaye, mm. <laughs> from your state, your people. <laughs> your people, your people. Your people. Okay, then um, Senator Dino Milaye actually tweeted mm -hmm. that the rule was actually made because of him. Because of him. Yes. To withdraw his, <laughs> his oddly. Mm. I don't think uh -huh. so. So do you really... actually see this, like like she said, like more or less like politics being played out here? Well, because elections are next year, mm. yeah. most things happening around this period are uh, all, oh, yeah. Know, Look at it, it from like the other angle. It have shadows. Exactly. <laughs> if they are withdrawn, Who knows? they should be permanently withdrawn. They should not withdrawn and still and be, then say after yes. the election they mm -hmm. begin to attach to VIPs again. Mm. Okay. Yes. Mm. I mean, if, if I think the withdrawal and even the calling back of the um, what was the other thing, the spy. They are not yeah, yeah, that's yes. not even that's yes. more or less like for mm -hmm. registration. You're yes. meant to just register. Yes, that. Yes. So in the first place, team. that is an entirely police thing. So in the first place, it should have been monitored properly by even them who you you, exactly. you, do you understand Best so it shouldn't even have been an issue not just for, for, for public weeks. perusal in the first place so yes. i don't know but let's wait and see how this goes <laughs> and see if this is just going to be swept under the carpet like we've seen in the recent past all right moving it along uh to our next topic liberia requests Six thousand teachers from Nigeria. Do we have six thousand teachers in Nigeria to start with? <laughs> I don't know. I'm asking. Okay, anyway, <laughs> you want to go to Nigeria? Anyway, why would you want to go to Liberia? I was, I, you Liberia. know, when I saw this news break, then I went to look up on Liberia on their um, education, education, whatever in Liberia, and I found out that Nigeria's story is <laughs> way, better. way better. You know, out of out of almost 120,000 that put in for WASC, they still call it WASC yes. there, yeah. only one person passed. passed. One. <laughs> you know, it's laughable, yeah. but it's the reality. So they do need intervention when it comes to the education system. Anyways, uh, let me quickly read the news bit. Liberia's recently elected President George Ware on a visit to Nigeria has requested, amongst other things, at least 6,000 teachers to make up for the shortage of good teachers <coughs> in his country's education system. Consequently, the question arises whether Nigeria can afford to send out its good teachers while it suffers a shortage at home. According to the Teachers Registration Council of Nigeria, TRCN, about 300,000 of the 700,000 teachers in Nigeria are not qualified to teach. All right. Uh, in Kano State, Kaduna, and Edo State, large numbers of teachers have been found incompetent, both intellectually and in professional competence. Not too long ago, if we all recall correctly, the Kaduna, Kaduna State, State government State. had to sack over 2,000 teachers who could not pass a basic four, you know, yeah. examination. <laughs> well, to just counter what you just said, patients. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Would I get to say, um, Mr. Ajiboye, mm -hmm. who actually adds that uh, yeah. first letter what you just yeah. said, they said they have about two million. Is it two million um, qualified and certified teachers, teachers in Nigeria? In Nigeria. Okay, but then what, you, what, what, what do you Nigeria? ladies think? Do, do you think? I mean, there's a morality issue here too. Yeah. You understand? Mm -hmm. I mean, if Liberia is looking up to us, we cannot uh, let them down. Oh, but then, should we? Should we be doing this really? Seeing as, yes. as which we have the same hmm? problem, <laughs> we have the same, <laughs> same problem. Uh, teachers to Liberia. Yes. If they look up to you, why not? Even if you cannot provide the quantity they need. Okay. Give them something. Just give them That's something. That's the midway I also suggest. I mean, what? It, uh, the midway I also suggest is that because our, our, our teacher to pupil ratio here hasn't met with the ideal yes. yet. So, I mean, we really do not have to give. And in any case, we are battling with a, with, a, with a standard of education that hasn't really met the needs of our country. So sure. why would you give to someone that which is not even really beneficial to your own mm. social, political, or economic um, 
development as mm. a country. Mm. So, oh, but anyway, Nigeria is perceived to be the giant of, of Africa. Africa. Mm. And so when you know, George Wea, I guess, has a lot of respect and regard for Nigeria, and he mm. says he needs uh, political, political change, has to be backed by development, and the key to development is it's education. education. And yes. So he's asking for assistance. Mm. I think that we could perhaps meet them halfway. Okay. Maybe a thousand yeah. teachers. Maybe mm. even oh, five hundred. Or five hundred teachers. Yes. Give them something. Maybe for yeah. a six months and then you, or even have some of his people come over here and then mm. on, be a teacher assist, teaching assistant to the teachers here mm -hmm. for a period and then some innovative strategy but not to leave them hanging. Yes, hanging. Yeah, so and at say. the same time not to put us out because we don't have enough we don't even have competence yes we are yes not, that's we are the issue of the confidence of it you know mm. we usually have uh, this uh so have a qualification practice as mm. in you you study law and you'll be you'll be working as a what is it called as a computer literate or whatever okay. <laughs> i think <laughs> that's right <laughs> <one, laughs> and you attend uh, maybe a college of education and you'll be somewhere working as a cleaner or office assistant mm. if they are to practice or follow up your discipline your line of discipline they should we should have a qualified yeah. discipline but because i see several applicants that like was ap uh, applying to our office as a um, secretary you will see you just find uh, studying a uh, mass com and you want to be a secretary in someone's office you study uh, whatever you want to be that and i also find some people that actually attend um, college, uh, college of education and whatever and they should find a place where they should exploit or, or like uh, give out what they really it take exactly. from school but mm -hmm. they just just don't want to belong to that field which mm -hmm. is also affecting our uh, whatever mm. that they are claiming not to okay. have in Nigeria. Because right, such person come out and be teaching from nursery school and um, to secondary primary school, whatever it's experience going along. But but, um, but to to be to be sincere, don't you think this is more or less like a mockery because our educational system actually needs an overall in totally curriculum everything needs to be more responsive so it's, to what the we need to actually get it right before we start exporting we don't export what we don't have that's not like we're exporting what we have what we have it might be definitely you have but if you don't have it cannot be like you have it we do well, a lot of uh, a lot of the things we were taught in school is no longer in vogue it's old school and i'm talking academic wise you know, I have children, so sometimes when they bring home their homework, I'm at a loss, you know, because I, 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 I thought I knew a lot, you know, and then you find out that everything has changed. Has changed. I give you a vivid example. I was taught when I was in school that we had nine planets. I guess everybody, yes, of course, then. you know, yes. And then my, my, my son brought, brought home his homework. He actually knew it. And I was like, why'd you write eight? We have nine planets. And I know mommy is eight planets. planets. And then I went and checked and it's eight. One has actually One gone of the planets is no longer, yes, yes. It's gone into. So you, we need to keep um, updating. 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 Yes. yes, that's what we need to do because uh, times are changing and we need mm -hmm. to move with the time. So we are in agreement that Nigeria should send teachers to Liberia. Not, I don't yeah. think we have the capacity. <laughs> <laughs> not 6,000, maybe not 6,000. 6, there should yeah, be an innovative to way offer. to meet their needs. You know? well, yeah. there are some some come so here, if you go, you're teaching those there, maybe a six months training program for the teachers there, then a the batch comes here, mm. at the same time they're learning from some here. So at the end of the day, maybe mm. in a year, you get a thousand trained yeah. Liberian teachers. Exactly. So it's so more, more like an exchange well, program. Exchange, yeah, mm. Funny enough, you know, some people will still like it, I am working abroad. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, the, 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 the update, the update to that right now is there's a cloud, people are running really, yeah. because yeah, they want to go to Liberia. Yeah. Yeah. So but then the, is it the like teachers the registration council? Only duly registered and certified teachers I will think go that's to where Liberia. They came with the seven hundred thousand, so mm. they only have seven hundred thousand. I just don't just get to put one six inside this <laughs> thing. I live in Nigeria. I live. Do you want to go to Liberia? Like <laughs> seriously? <laughs> I know you said that earlier. <laughs> All right, people. Uh,
Oh, it's been a very great show today. <laughs> Meanwhile, I have to apologize uh, to our viewers. Sorry, we couldn't take feedback today. Our feedback platform uh, has some Crashed. issues. So t <laughs> tomorrow we'll be back, and we hope you interact with us on the show. All right, let's have quick last words from you, Izigo Day, <laughs> and what okay. we've talked about uh, today. It's one, thank you again for mm -hmm. inviting us. You're us. welcome. It's been a pleasure being here. Mm -hmm. And then I think that um, it is good when people ask you mm -hmm. for something. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, they say, those who are busy mm. always get more work. So if Nigeria is busy <coughs> trying to boost its educational system mm -hmm. and people are asking you for that which the little you even have, mm. I think oh, it's, it's a plus, mm. you know. And then again, back to the trafficking thing, I think that all hands, we really need to take this as a call, mm -hmm. a partnership that the OBA is signaling. Traditional institutions are willing to, to, to work with every other person, law enforcement, CSOs, to ensure that trafficking is rooted out of not just Edo State, but the country. Because his course, he says, goes as far as even those who are of, of you know, Nigerian extract. In, in diaspora. The diaspora. No. The curses, so, the curses so. go, will climb seven mountains. <laughs> yes. So I think that we need to push, the ocean. really need to push oh, wow. with that um, strong punch that he's given. Exactly. And, and see that it comes out with good results. Okay. All right. Queen, your last words. Yeah, it's a great pleasure. I'm happy and, of course, very happy to be in your midst and mm -hmm. also to give the little of my own uh, contribution to this topic. Mm. I think for my first award, most I'm happy contributing to us seriously today is one is on the issue of the child trafficking because it's always been my passion, my zeal to fight for the rights of the less privileged, mm. just the way Oba said. Mm. And for that, I think I will still take the campaign to Bini again. Please do. To also solidify it as mm. in my own area. Please do. Uh, that is my own uh, support that mm -hmm. I'm behind Oba's uh, <laughs> new decree. <laughs> then of uh, the police issue, mm -hmm. of course, we're into it. And as often as I come to the television, I keep revealing what I know about police. <laughs> So it's just for us to join her together and do the it's best our agenda. to leave the country. You're on a mission. <laughs> you are your own in that. The police is your friend. Don't forget yes. those girls. You always do this. Okay. <laughs> all right. Thank you again, ladies. Thank you. Thank you for coming on the show today. All right. That's about uh, all we can take Thank on the you. program today. So Our guest today has been Queen Rose Ame, a renowned activist. Thank you so much, Thank Queen, you. for coming. And also we had a legal practitioner, Isaac Ode Obia, who is with uh, Spaces for Youth Development and Social Change. Thank you Thank so you. much Thank you. for coming on the show. Alero. Thank, Thank you. you. Today. Give yourself. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Tomorrow at noon, let's do this again. Enjoy your day.